everyone and welcome to another Minecraft video. In this video, I'm going to spend 100 days on a deserted Minecraft island. I want to thank Forge Labs for coming up with the original idea of spending 100 days on a deserted island in Minecraft, and also Luke the Notable for coming up with the whole trend of 100 days in Minecraft. Unlike other videos like this, our main goal is not to defeat the Ender Dragon, the Wither, or in fact any other boss in Minecraft. Our goal is to have fun, explore and build a lot. For anyone wondering, I did design and create the custom world with the deserted island by myself in a program called Wall Painter. And with that done, I started playing. Alright, starting with day 0. Minecraft does in fact start with day 0, not day 1. So on day 1, I did what anyone would do when they start off in a brand new Minecraft world. Get some wood, do a little mining, try to get some food, though I did starve throughout the entire day, and I nearly got blown up by a creeper. Great start! <laughs> uh, not really. On day 1, all I did was go fishing. I figured fish would probably be the best food source on this entire island, because I'm literally surrounded by it. I did this throughout the entire day and night, and on day 2 I started exploring more of this island. I climbed up a mountain and decided that that would be exactly where I was going to build my main base. I wanted to build an entire bridge house between two mountains. It's got two very nice profits. One, it's above the ground, meaning there will be less mobs to deal with, and two, I can see the sunrise across the horizon right through my window. So for the rest of the day, I was collecting wood, and during the night time, I had to hide in another shelter waiting for the sun to rise because I was getting really unlucky with the sheep spawns and had literally zero wool, which meant that I couldn't craft a bed. On day 3, I continued chopping wood for the base. Those custom trees are enormous, so I knew we'd probably never run out of wood on this island. In the night, I went out to hunt for the totally not oversized freakish spiders to get some string. String can be used to craft wool, which we can later obviously use to craft a bed with. You wanna see how that turned out? I died, but I got my stuff back later. On day 4, I took a break from chopping down the entire Amazon rainforest. Wait, isn't <clears throat> and I went mining. I only got back to the surface on day 5, and that's when I finally started construction on my base. On day 6, along with the construction of the base, I built a mini wheat farm right below, as well as a tiny fishing river, which I ended up calling just a regular river because I never went fishing there. On day 7, I went fishing on the beach, and during day 8 to day 10, I was mining, determined to get full diamond armor. Though, I gave up on that on day 11, because I didn't find any diamonds at all. Instead, I upgraded the stackies that was going down to the mine, because I was tired of bumping my head into those rocks every time I was going down. I must have lost at least 10 brain cells every time I went down there. On day 12 to day 13, I was mainly working on a nice mine lobby, which I later decided would be my starter base, because I knew that the main base would take some time to build, because of the amount of wood I needed. I also finally got a bed, and of course, I wanted a red one. Did you know I'm really good at sleeping? I can even do it with my eyes closed. On day 14, I had finally retrieved the motivation to go mining again. I guess that short break was enough, and I came back on day 16 with enough diamonds to craft a full set of diamond armor and a pickaxe. Though I made a terrible mistake while scrafting, and I accidentally crafted two diamond leggings. Ouch. That was a waste of 7 diamonds. Next, I continue working on my main base until day 24. I know that it currently looks like a block of wooden too, but the more time passed, the better it looked. On day 25, I built the staircase, leading us down to the wheat farm that we built earlier right beneath the base. The staircase wasn't fancy or anything, I just needed a way up and down the base. On day 26, I changed the landscape just a little bit around the entrance of the base, and I also started working on some interior which went on until day 27. At the end of day 27, I enjoyed the beautiful sunset from the top of a mountain.
Day 28 wasn't important at all, I just decorated the place a little bit by adding some lanterns here and there for lighting and expanding the path beneath the base. On day 29 I was feeling very adventurous, so I went out to explore the rest of the island. For a few minutes I happened to be circling around my main base without even knowing it. Here's the clip of me finding out that, yeah, I was just going in circles. On day 30, during the exploration, I found a volcano. Or maybe I should say THE volcano, since I'm the one who designed and created this entire island. The volcano was absolutely epic, and I cranked up the render distance a bit when I was up there just to be able to see the, the bottom of the island. At the end of day 31, I got back from my adventure and I planted a few flowers around the base that I found during my adventure. On day 32, I worked a little bit more on the interior of the base, added a few more chests for storage and I attempted to include a fireplace into the house, but it didn't really look as good as I was expecting it to look. On day 33, I organized all my items in some chests and barrels, because I simply cannot play Minecraft without having an organized storage room. It doesn't even have to be automatic, as long as the chests are organized and I know where all of my items are. On day 34, I built a stone pillar that holds up the entire base. It was a bit thin, but it looked fine, my OCD just couldn't allow it to be floating. Finally, it doesn't look like a bamboo stick between two mountains. On day 35, I went back to the mines mainly to get some more coal. You know what's so ironic about that? It's the fact that I found 19 diamonds in like 5 minutes and almost no coal at all. It looks like Minecraft wanted to repay me for the struggle I had to find diamonds earlier. During the night of day 36, I came home the richest I had ever been in this world, with whopping 47 diamonds and stacks of iron ore. On day 37, I was in the mood to build, and this lasted for a while. I extended our current path down to the beach and it turned out great. In order to build the path I had to clear out the forest a little bit which gave me a lot of wood in return, which is always good to have. I sort of made an outline of the path with some leaves and it made it look even better. I built a nice fishing hub for when I want to go fishing since that has apparently become the only source of food on this island. Because the animals weren't really in the mood to spawn, the fishing hub was extremely simple and it was built purely to keep me safe from the mobs when I'm fishing during nighttime. It had everything I needed. A chest crafting table and two furnaces. On day 48 to 49, I went fishing for some more, well, fish. What else did you expect me to fish up? The Titanic? <laughs> I got quite a lot of puffer fish, and it's a shame we can't eat them. I mean, yeah, technically we can eat them, but kind of not because they're poisonous. So, yeah. It would be cool if we would be able to, like, cook them or something and then eat them without being poisoned. That would be pretty cool. Anyway, on day 50, I was back at it again in the mood to build. I built another wonderful path by the wheat farm. I built this sort of support wall against the mountain using granite, which made the path stand out even more. I would have liked to add some bricks into the mix, but we didn't have any clay, no villagers to trade with. I also built these mini stone spikes on the opposite side, and I think it turned out great. I 
decided to build a little campsite and a mini forge at the end of the path that I built. The concept was very simple, same with the block choice. I would have liked to add more details and make the forge a little bigger, but judging by the fact that I'm living on a deserted island with only one biome, I was pretty limited by the resources that I had access to. Technically, I could load in new chunks by sailing over the sea, but I wanted to spend the most time possible on the island, since that is the main point of the video. The campsite area was finished by the 65th day, which I ended by harvesting some wheat. I built this mini cliff out of andesite and cobblestone as a background for the campsite, which made it look really cozy actually. The forge was integrated into the mountain and it had the most basic stuff you'd need. Forges don't usually provide food, but I added a couple of smokers in there just because I could. I can't believe I survived nearly 70 days without animals, but apparently I did. Only on day 66 did I really care about getting some animals. No animals wanted to spawn in the forests in front of the base, so I decided to cut down a portion of a forest behind our base, which we would never notice. This very much wasted our time because not a single animal spawned. Although I did kind of make use of the time when I was waiting for the animals to spawn, I decided to build a wheat farm on the rooftop of my base. It kind of acted as a roof balcony, I guess you could call it. And uh, well, it, it's not it's not great, but I mean it serves a function. We get a lot of wheat for food, which is always good to have. The determination to get animals, I broke my unwritten rule. I sailed off with my back facing our wonderful island looking for some default generated terrain where I could find some animals such as sheep and cows. Like I said, cutting down a portion of that forest wasted a lot of time, so only by day 80 did I have two sheep and two cows on my island. That raised my interest in exploring other parts of the world, so off I went on another adventure in hopes to find some cool biomes. Though on day 81 an accident happened. I have no idea how this happened, but here's the footage. During my adventure in the desert, I was looking straight towards the sky. I have no idea why, but I don't know, maybe I was just enjoying the look of the clouds. And out of nowhere, I fell into a ravine. I tried to land on an overhang of the ravine, but I failed, and just like that, I lost my diamond gear. I was fairly confident I would never find that stuff again, because the last time I had taken my coordinates was a while ago, and I was going in a totally random direction. Though luckily I had a lot of spare diamonds to recover my gear. On day 83 and 84, I went fishing to clear out my mind. Even though I didn't really lose anything valuable considering the amount of diamonds I had, I was a little bit upset by the mistake I made. I mean, not even the Simpsons would have predicted that I would have fallen into a ravine by just looking at the sky. So there you have it folks, pro tip, never look up at the sky while sprinting in Minecraft, or at least not in a desert because this might happen to you. On day 86, I started building a nice area for my animals. I went with a similar design that I used for the path next to the wheat farm by building a stone wall, but this time it's out of andesite instead of granite. I continued working on this until day 88. Things like this on Minecraft really bring together the entire storyline and character of a Minecraft world for me. As a builder, I usually focus more on the look of something rather than the function. Even though an animal pen doesn't necessarily need to have any fancy function, apart from keeping the animals safe, I still want to make it look nice. Just like some people would rather spend an extra hundred bucks on RGB for their PC instead of using those hundred bucks to maybe get a better graphics card or more memory. The last thing that I really wanted to do before the hundred days were over was to get a full enchantment table set up. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time for that, but I didn't know that at the time. So on day 89, I began breeding our cows to get a ton of leather. While I was doing this, I watched multiple YouTube videos because breeding cows in Minecraft isn't exactly exciting in any way. 
On day 95, I killed all of the adult cows, but I still didn't have enough leather. On day 96, I harvested some more wheat on top of my base, not at the farm below the base. I did an MLG water clutch and I went back to breeding cows. Only on day 97 did I have enough leather, but with me focusing on the leather, I totally forgot about the paper which I need to craft the books. So I sailed across the seas the fastest I could to find some sugarcane. On day 99, with the sugarcane that I had found, I built a manual sugarcane farm. I didn't have quartz to get observers, so that's why I didn't build an automatic one. But I got impatient and stole half of the sugarcane from the farm to craft just enough paper for a book in order to craft an enchantment table. And with that done, it was now day 100. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to build an entire level 30 enchantment table setup, but that's fine. This video took 30 plus hours to make, so I'd really appreciate it if you could smash that like button as well as subscribe to the channel, because if this video gets enough support, I'll definitely make this into a series, and soon enough, I will spend 200 days on this island. So with that said, thank you all ever so much for watching this video, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. By the way, to anyone who's still watching these last few seconds of the video, I have a series called the Mini SMP where we're basically just playing regular multiplayer survival, but we're working on some really cool build projects, so I'd recommend you to check it out. I also have a series where I'm transforming the builds from the Hermitcraft Season 6 world, so if you're a fan of Hermitcraft, then I'd recommend you to check that out too. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!